buried for thousands of years beneath layers of earth, sand, and time, the ruins of the Indus Valley whisper of a civilization so advanced, its true origins have haunted archaeologists for generations. Towering brick cities, intricate drainage systems, and undeciphered scripts, all built by a people who vanished without a trace. Who were they? Where did they come from? And how did such a sophisticated culture rise in complete isolation, only to disappear? Now, in a dusty grave beneath the ancient city of Rakegari, a single human skeleton has offered a clue more powerful than any artifact. Inside a molar, preserved against all odds, is a sliver of ancient DNA, a biological time capsule untouched for over 4,500 years. Scientists were stunned. This wasn't just a relic. It was a message from the dead. For the first time, modern genetic tools have broken through the silence of the past, challenging long-held theories and rewriting the very story of South Asia. The question is no longer if we can know who these people were, but how deep the truth will take us. What does this ancient genome reveal about the people of the Indus Valley? And could it change everything we thought we knew about the dawn of civilization? At the height of its glory, over 4,500 years ago, the Indus Valley civilization stretched across more than 1.25 million square kilometers, a territory larger than ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia combined. From the massive urban centers of Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa to the lesser known but equally impressive city of Rakigarhi, this Bronze Age society was a marvel of human ingenuity. Its people engineered grid-like cities, crafted jewelry with microscopic precision, and maintained complex trade networks that extended from Mesopotamia to Central Asia. Yet, despite their sophistication, they left behind no temples, no kings, and no decipherable records. The mystery only deepened when their civilization vanished around 1900 BCE, seemingly without war, plague, or conquest. For decades, historians and archaeologists debated their origins. Were they native to the subcontinent, descendants of migrating Mesopotamians, or part of the elusive Aryan puzzle that still divides modern scholarship? Linguists pointed to the undeciphered Indus script, hoping for a Rosetta Stone that never came. Geneticists speculated, but lacked hard data. All theories, no proof. Until now. With the discovery of that single tooth in Rakigari, science gained a foothold. And through that tiny fragment of DNA, a civilization long lost to time began to speak again. It began in 2016, in the heart of Haryana, India at the ancient site of Rakigari, one of the largest known cities of the Indus Valley civilization. During a carefully controlled excavation, archaeologists uncovered the burial of a young woman. Her skeleton was remarkably intact, lying in a supine position, hands crossed over the abdomen, surrounded by pottery. But what truly caught the attention of geneticists was a single molar a tooth untouched by the millennia, sealed in the dry soil and protected from the decay that had consumed countless other remains. A team from the Deccan College and South Korean geneticists carefully extracted it, knowing they held something rare. Ancient DNA is fragile, easily destroyed by heat, humidity, and time. Yet, against all odds, Inside this tooth was a viable genetic sequence, one that could offer the first complete genome of an individual from the Indus Valley civilization. This wasn't just another archaeological find. It was the key to unlocking a biological record, one that could trace the ancestry, migration, and identity of a people lost to time. Scientists prepared to begin a delicate, high-stakes operation one that might confirm or destroy decades of speculation. And as they peered into the tiny double helix trapped in the tooth, they were about to open a portal into the most silent chapter of ancient history. 
The investigation was a race against contamination, degradation, and time itself. At the Seoul National University's ancient DNA lab, scientists worked in a sterile, high-security environment where even a breath could ruin the sample. Layers of protective suits, filtered air, and UV-sterilized instruments were deployed to isolate the ancient genetic material from modern interference. The sample was meticulously cleaned, its proteins dissolved, and its nucleotides extracted in an effort that took weeks of painstaking labor. Meanwhile, in India, a parallel analysis of the burial site's stratigraphy, tools, and ceramics confirmed the woman had lived during the mature phase of the Indus Valley civilization, around 2500 BCE. But challenges emerged. Out of 61 excavated skeletons, only one had DNA viable enough to sequence, a stark reminder of the harsh toll that time and climate take on organic material in South Asia. Even then, the genome was not complete. Scientists had to reconstruct segments, verify sequences, and cross-reference with existing ancient DNA databases from Central Asia, Iran, and the Indian subcontinent. The results were cryptic at first. Patterns emerged slowly. But when the first full reconstruction of her ancestry came into focus, researchers paused. It didn't match what they expected. The genetic signature was unique, distinct, neither Indo-European nor purely Dravidian. What they had uncovered challenged everything. When the genome was finally decoded, the truth hit with scientific force. The woman from Rakigari carried no traces of steppe ancestry, the genetic signature often linked to the Indo-European migrations. This was groundbreaking. For decades, the dominant theory suggested that the Indus Valley people had been heavily influenced, or even displaced, by Aryan invaders from the Central Asian steppes. But her DNA told a different story, one of continuity, not replacement. The primary ancestry matched a population now referred to as the Indus Periphery Group, a mix of indigenous South Asian hunter-gatherers and ancient Iranian agriculturalists who had mingled thousands of years before the rise of cities. This woman's genome showed no signs of genetic input from the steppe, placing her before the so-called Aryan migrations. The implication? The builders of the Indus Valley civilization were not outsiders. They were local, rooted, and genetically distinct. Even more, this ancient DNA showed continuity with modern South Asian populations, particularly in the southern regions, suggesting that the legacy of the Indus people still flows in the blood of millions today. This shattered colonial-era narratives and forced a dramatic rethinking of South Asian prehistory. With one molar, one genome, the past had spoken, loud and clear. The Indus Valley people were not mysterious strangers. They were ancestral architects of one of the world's greatest civilizations. Now, armed with genetic proof, historians and scientists began to reconstruct the rise of the Indus Valley civilization not as a mystery born of invasion, but as a native evolution shaped by environment, migration, and innovation. Thousands of years before the first bricks of Mohenjo-daro were laid, communities of hunter-gatherers thrived along the banks of the ancient Saraswati and Indus rivers. Slowly, they blended with migrating farmers from the Iranian plateau, bringing new agricultural techniques and domesticated crops. This fusion sparked an unprecedented transformation. Villages became towns. Towns became cities. And by 2600 BCE, a vast urban network emerged, complete with public baths, sewage systems, and standardized weights and measures. No kings ruled, no armies marched, yet order prevailed. Trade caravans moved goods from the Himalayas to the Arabian Sea. Craftsmen shaped carnelian, copper, and ivory with microscopic detail. In the quiet rhythm of daily life, a great civilization was born, guided not by conquest, but by cooperation. And then, 
silence. Around 1900 BCE, something shifted. Rivers dried, monsoons failed, trade collapsed. Slowly, the cities were abandoned, but the people did not vanish. They migrated east and south, carrying their culture, their language roots, and their genes into the heart of the Indian subcontinent. Today, their legacy lives not only in broken bricks and lost cities, but in the living DNA of millions. The discovery of ancient DNA from a single tooth in Rakigari didn't just solve a mystery. It rewrote the origin story of an entire civilization. For centuries, the Indus Valley people were a silent enigma, mischaracterized by outsiders and overlooked by history. But now, science has given them a voice. They were not lost. They were not erased. They were the architects of a civilization built on resilience, adaptation, and innovation, a legacy still etched into the cultural and genetic fabric of South Asia today. In a time where identity and history are often weaponized, the genome of one ancient woman reminds us that the truth lies not in myths or political narratives, but in the code written deep within us. The Indus Valley civilization didn't vanish. It evolved. Its people moved, adapted, and endured. And through modern technology, they finally speak. What other secrets lie buried beneath our feet, waiting to be unlocked by science? What forgotten ancestors still live within our DNA? This is only the beginning. If this story fascinated you, don't forget to like, subscribe, and dive into our other videos, where history, mystery, and science collide to uncover the truth hidden beneath the sands of time.